Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Dear friends, welcome back. In our previous lecture, we discussed about aerofoil and the corresponding characteristics of aerofoil. We find out what is the lift curve slope, what is CD naught, CD minimum, and then CM naught or CMAC about aerodynamic CMAC, which is about aerodynamic center. And we observed it is for most of the aerofoils, it falls within 22 to 26 percent of the cord. And we calculated how to get CL alpha 3D given CL alpha 2D, right? We related that. Right now, let us look at air, what are the external forces acting on the aircraft. The whole aim of this exercise is to find out what is the weight of a system or weight estimate the initial estimate of the weight of the system, which is by adding up the weights of individual components, right? That is a weight breakup of the UAV. And then what is the design CL at which you want to fly from which you can figure out what should be the corresponding area or the platform area of this UAV. Now let us look at what are the various external forces acting on this aircraft. As we discussed, thrust is the force that makes this aircraft to fly at the desired velocity. And we have weight acting open vertically down. And due to this thrust, the aircraft flies at a velocity V infinity. And because of which, we have aerodynamic forces lift and drag. We have lift and drag acting along V infinity. Now, when you say V infinity like this, what does it mean? When you draw V infinity like this, it represents the direction of motion of the aircraft. So, when you say velocity, it should have both magnitude and the direction, right? So, in what direction the aircraft moves? Otherwise, what is the aircraft's path? Right. Now, let us discuss a concept called flight path angle. Right. So, you have your UAV. moving at a velocity v infinity right so with respect to local horizontal the angle made by this v infinity is known as gamma flight path angle right now is there a relationship between flight path angle angle of attack and orientation of the aircraft right so to understand that let us take up a small example Let us consider a level road. Okay. Say I have a bike with equal front and rear tire. Say these two wheels of this bike are connected by means of this rod. Since we have equal front and rear tire, this rod will be parallel to the road here. Right. Say I am sitting on this bike. If I start moving in this direction, the free stream velocity that I face will be parallel to my path in general. So, my path is parallel to the road here. So, the free stream velocity is parallel to me. Say so this is my V infinity. Now, let us assume this is my reference line and since it is parallel to this path, 
right since i have equal front and rear tire and the free stream is also parallel to this v infinite uh, parallel to this road so the angle of attack that i face with respect to this free stream is zero i don't see assuming this is my this rod is my reference line i don't face any angle of attack and moreover the the path that i am following is parallel right so the angle made by this v infinity with respect to this plane road is uh, is zero gamma is zero here since it's a horizontal road right so i don't have any flight pa flight path angle or the ang and as well as since my path is parallel to the ground at the same time i don't see any angle of attack in this case now say suddenly i encountered a flyover which is inclined to local horizontal or the hori initial horizontal road by an angle gamma right so i start with the same bike i start moving on this flyover right so the free stream now will be since i am moving in this direction the free stream will be opposite to me right again i am moving parallel to this flyover the free stream will be parallel to this flyover say this is my v infinity right since i have level tires like i mean equal diameter tires i still face zero angle of attack here alpha is zero what i have is, but my free stream velocity is inclined at an angle gamma which is nothing but the path in which i am moving right so the path in which i will be moving is gamma here with respect to horizontal now say on the same road i have changed my bike say i have a bigger front wheel and a smaller rear wheel so let us say i connect this front and back tire by means of a road say i am sitting on this i start moving in this direction right so i will start facing stream opposite to me and which is parallel to this ground since i am moving parallel to this so but in this case what i see is an angle of attack alpha because this free stream v infinity is making an angle with my reference line alpha here so in this case i have an alpha right and once i since i'm traveling on the same road right i'll face an, an flyover after a while say this is gamma again now i am traveling with a different bike compared to this case right with a bigger front wheel and a smaller rear wheel now again the free stream will be parallel to my path and my path is along this flyover which is inclined at an angle gamma that means my free stream v infinity gives the direction of my path if i know what is the angle measured with respect to this free free stream that means that angle is equals to the angle at which my flight the my vehicle is actually moving right so in this case since i have a bigger front wheel and smaller rear wheel even so i'll in this case i will see certain angle of attack right as well as i am moving at on a inclined path which is gamma so my what is my total orientation now let us let let theta represent the total orientation with respect to which is measured with respect to horizontal right so in this case what is my orientation zero in this case gamma with respect to horizontal so in this case my orientation is alpha right here it is my orientation is alpha plus gamma so similar to this case say when you are traveling on a level road right you still have an orientation which doesn't mean that since you are sitting in this at this angle it doesn't mean that you are moving in this direction right that means you can still have an angle of attack when you are traveling yeah. horizontal or parallel to the ground right where even when you have when you are flying at a level flight condition you still have an angle of attack so in which the gamma is zero in this case right because gamma is measured with respect to local horizontal right so now let us come back to this aircraft
So this is my FRL, fuse loss reference line. Okay. So my angle of attack is defined with respect to this fuse loss reference line. So this is my V infinity. So what does it mean? So my aircraft is actually moving in this direction, right? Along that's why you face V infinity opposite to you. So the free stream will be opposite to the direction of your motion, right? So this angle, say, is the angle of attack, right? Say this is my local horizontal, or say this is my ground. So the angle made by this V infinity with respect to this local horizontal is gamma. So if I can represent that local horizontal here, okay, these two are parallel. So this angle is gamma, right? And this is this is alpha. Now the orientation of the aircraft is theta, which is alpha plus gamma. So gamma gives the direction of your motion. Let us consider an aircraft moving in a vertical plane, right? Moving in this vertical plane, constrain our motion, motion of this UAV to this vertical plane. So let W act perpendicular to the Local horizontal, right? Is a weight acting perpendicular to local horizontal. Let T be the thrust vector, which is along the fuselage reference line, FRL. And say the aircraft is moving with a velocity V infinity, right? And this angle is known as angle of attack. So with respect to local horizontal, so the aircraft is moving with V infinity in the direction gamma, right here. Yeah. Now what will be the direction of drag along V infinity? This is drag and you have lift which is perpendicular to V infinity. So this is lift. Now, let us now write down equations of motion along the flight path and perpendicular to flight path. Right? So that is along V infinity and perpendicular to V infinity. So the component of W which is acting along perpendicular to V infinity but in negative direction of lift is W cos gamma and the component of weight acting along D is W sin gamma, right, where this angle is gamma. We know v, v infinity and this negative lift line are perpendicular. So we know this angle is 90 degrees, 90, this is 90. So you know, you have this as gamma. Right, this is your local horizontal and weight acts perpendicular to local horizontal. So this angle is 90 degrees again. Okay. But this angle is gamma. The, the V infinity makes an angle gamma with respect to local horizontal. So what about this angle? 90 minus gamma. This becomes like 90, mi 90 minus gamma. So this particular portion is 90 minus gamma. And this is 90 degrees, so 90 minus 90 minus gamma will give you gamma. This is your. So this is gamma, right? So a component of W acting along negative lift is W cos gamma, and along the drag is W sin gamma. And say this is your thrust miss alignment. So it is not necessary that thrust is along fuselage reference line. Okay. 
So let us make it a bit complicated. So thrust is not along FRL, right? Say this is your thrust line and this is your reference line. So let me take another chalk. This is your fuse loss reference line. Right? This is your F R L. Right? So this thrust is misaligned. So now the angle of attack will be with respect to fuse loss reference line. So this is your V infinity. So this angle is alpha. Right? Now this T is misaligned with V infinity by an angle epsilon. So your T is not along the act, not acting along the direction of your motion. Right? So now the component of T along your direction of your motion is T cos epsilon and perpendicular to the direction of motion which is along the direction of lift is T sin epsilon. Now let us write equations of motion for this case. Say this particular aircraft is rotating in this vertical plane about a center point O which is of radius R1. Right? This is performing a loop at the same time. Now, According to Newton's second law, the total external forces acting is equals to rate of change of linear momentum assuming mass is constant d by dt of v bar. Right? So what are the external forces here? Thrust, lift, drag and weight that are acting on this aircraft. So now let us consider a unit vector along lift direction is eta and the unit vector which is parallel to flight path angle is zeta, zeta cap, right? So this is your positive direction of your eta cap and along the lift and this is the positive direction of your zeta cap. So the total external force is force which is parallel to gamma into zeta cap plus sigma f, you should say it is a total external force, right? So sigma f which is perpendicular to gamma, that is perpendicular to gamma is perpendicular to free stream velocity here along eta direction, right? Is equals to m into dv bar by dt. Let us rewrite those equations here. So the total external forces, f external is equals to rate of change of linear momentum, right? So while, there are, while handling these equations, we assume that the aircraft is a point mass acted upon these four external forces, right? So this is sigma f, f external which are parallel to gamma and the corresponding unit vector along gamma is zeta cap plus total external forces which are acting perpendicular to gamma eta cap is equals to mass into acceleration which is parallel to gamma into zeta cap plus acceleration which is perpendicular to gamma into eta cap, right? Now let us, let us consider the forces or the equation of motion along the flight path angle, which is by comparing the coefficients of zeta cap, right? So total sigma f external parallel to gamma is equals to 
what are the forces? Positive forces here is like, what are the total forces acting along zeta cap? T cos epsilon, D and W sin gamma. So, T cos epsilon is in the positive direction, D and W sin gamma in the are acting along the negative eta cap direction, zeta cap direction, sorry. So, the total external forces are T minus D, T cos epsilon minus D minus W sin gamma is equals to mass into acceleration which is parallel to gamma. Since V bar V infinity is the velocity along this direction, the acceleration will be and it is assumed, I mean the aircraft here is assumed as a point mass. So, acceleration we can represent it as D infinity by dt. So, say this is your first equation. Equation number now consider the second equation zeta f external which is perpendicular to gamma is equals to what are the forces acting perpendicular to flight path angle or lift and T sin epsilon or along the positive, positive direction of eta cap right along the positive direction of this axis and W cos gamma along the negative direction of this. So, what you have as an external force is perpendicular to flight path are T uh, L plus T sin epsilon lift and a component of thrust due to its missile alignment minus W cos gamma is equals to mass into acceleration perpendicular to gamma right flight path. Now, we assumed that this aircraft is, is rotating about this o, about O, right, which means O is the center of this rotation, which is at a radius R1. So, what will be the perpendicular acceleration here? V square by R. So, what do we do with these two equations? What is the motive? Consider a typical profile of a UAV. Say, this is your home, right? It initially has to take off. This is taxi and take off and then climb and then cruise, right? And then take a turn and cruise back to home, descent and landing at required position or the launch position. Or there can be another mission where you want to send unmanned system from one location to the other location, which also involves a takeoff, cruise and landing. Say this is your point B, this is your point B. So, if you want to send this UAV to another location, which also involves a takeoff, climb, cruise, descent, and landing. Takeoff and taxi. Mm, climb, cruise, descent. And land. Right. So, these are the typical mission for any UAV, or in fact, if you want to generalize for any aircraft. Right. Now, what should I do if I want to perform this mission? Say I have an aircraft. First of all, I need to know what should be either the fuel or the battery that I need to carry so that I can perform this particular mission. When you say is there fuel or battery, it means you need to carry so much energy, right? So, first you need to know what is the requirement of this particular mission. 
or the requirement of the system to perform this particular mission right and also in order to perform this mission you need to produce thrust right and it's a variable thrust because it has to undergo various phases so the thrust has to vary and moreover we will be talking more in terms of a propeller driven aircraft right so we, we need to produce enough power right to perform this particular mission so first of all we need to install an engine which is capable of producing the required power by the system right how do you know that how do you get to know or in other words which engine you want to install for this particular aircraft to perform this particular mission and what should be your fuel weight or overall weight breakup how do you get to know for a given mission requirements if this part, if i want to build a uav what should be the weight breakup or what should be the overall take off weight how do you estimate it and finally how do you design the wing of this uav right so the answer comes from this equations so these two equations are going to help us to address all these questions before proceeding further so for any design to start with or say if you consider a bike right so you see there are many specifications right it accelerate within so much time and it has got an engine with so much power right at the maximum speed is this much and the minimum speed like or the most econ economic speed is 40 to 60 or something so all these are ratings of the system right do you think whether these ratings have come after the design as a result of the product or they were considered before design if you ask me i'll say yes i want these requirements from this system or i want these specifications to be the output of this system and i have designed my system and i selected the engine accordingly so that means you have to specify your requirement beforehand before initiating the design so what you call it as mission requirement so mission requirements are taken as an input to the design process right so initially you take this mission requirements and you use historical database to perform configuration selection so what does this configuration selection includes you need to design what should be the wing plan form are you going for a wing alone configuration do you have a fuselage or or have you blended the fuselage into the wing or do you need a tail right if you need why and what should be the size of the tail and how far the wing and tail should be placed why there is a t tail why there is a conventional tail so all these questions to be addressed right so that is a configuration selection here so in this course we'll do we'll look at the glimpses of all these things right whatever we are going to discuss in this flow chart so once you select the configuration so that means the output here is a three dimensional 3d model right 3d model where you have the aerofoil selection and the wing platform geometry and the tail sizing and the control surfa surface sizing so you can get it as an output from this configuration selection and see whether this configuration selection satisfies the mission requirements or not it's like performance analysis you also work with simulation 
say certain parameters if you want to have the system certain parameters so that you can have a better control over the system and better performance right in terms of aerodynamic parameters which are generally observed by simulation so this you know to achieve that those parameters what should be the configuration it's not that just from the configuration you do the simulation it's that whatever the parameters that satisfies the simulation right and which are in general addresses most of address most of the problems like control and all right so if you want such parameters to be reflected in the system so how what should be the configuration and similarly you ha you have assumed some performance mission requirements right in which you might have specified some performance parameters this again a vice versa if you want this performance parameter what should be the wing size or the wing loading or the thrust loading or say if you want such a rate of climb what should be the engine that you need to install on this for this particular uae what should be the specific fuel consumption so all this comes here so mission requirements will drive the entire design process right and then again they are interlinked simulation and performance again they are interlinked coming back to this typical mission profile we witness there are various phases during a particular mission that a uae is has to perform so here let us say this is your home from which you are launching your uav it has to accelerate to the desired velocity and then so during this acceleration phase we can term it as take off and taxi right so and then it will climb to the desired altitude and it performs a, performs the mission that you require so this mission is mostly a cruise or or a study and level flight right and then it will come back to the approach point and then start approaching the home by descent by descending to the ground by descending to the required by descending and then it will it will take an approach descend and landing so if you look at this entire profile so the maximum time this uav will spend to spend performing cruise right now you have to design your system whereas the climb hardly takes around 2 minutes because it's a, it's an unmanned it can have bigger higher rate of climbs right and descent will hardly a gliding flight most in most of the cases and then landing yeah of course maybe for a couple of minutes so the major part is during cruise the major part this uav has to perform is cruise right where it involves maybe 2 hours of flight 3 hours of flight or 40 minutes of flight so so the ratio of times like uh, the ratio of time that it spent to cru for cruise and to the other phases of flight is very high or in other way the ratio of other phases of flight and the cruise time is very very less right so now whatever the design that you have to perform is for this cruise flight so now let us look at what should be the power requirement or the wing wing required right to say what should be the wing required to lift the uav of weight w right so we have to design this wing for this cruise now let us look at cruise flight so what is this cruise flight it is study plus level flight 
So, what do you mean by study? The constant velocity of light, right? And level flight. So, earlier we discussed, right? What is level flight? Consider this is your ground. Say this is your UAV flying at a geometric altitude of hg at time t1. Now, over a or a delta t, say t2, choose again measure the altitude of this UAV say it is hg2 and h is hg1. So, over this delta t, this hg2 minus hg1 remains same, right. If it remains same, then you say it is a level flight. So, from if you have level flight, that means the flight path will be parallel to the local horizontal. So, gamma is 0. That means gamma is equals to 0. Right? And further assume there is no thrust misalignment, which is epsilon 0. So, the total assumptions here are it is a steady flight and level flight without any thrust misalignment. Now, let us look at how these equations of motion in this vertical plane reduces to. So, substituting those epsilon naught and steady condition and level flight condition in equation 1 and 2, we have since it is a steady flight, the total the acceleration is 0, both parallel and perpendicular components of acceleration are 0 there. So, there is no misalignment further. So, cos epsilon cos 0 t cos 0 minus d minus w sin of gamma is 0 again here is equals to 0. This implies t minus d is equals to 0 that is t is equals to d. So, this is my equation equation C 1, which is equation for Croes 1, all right. And now substitute the same conditions for equation 2, what you have is L plus T sin 0 minus W cos 0 is equals to mass into acceleration perpendicular acceleration to flight path angle, which in this case is 0, right. So, this is L minus W is equals to 0, which implies lift is equals to weight of the system. If these two conditions are satisfied, you can have a level flight, right, which is a steady and level flight. Now, say if you have a mini jet engine, if you want to install on it, right. Now, thrust is equals to drag and lift is equals to weight, right. Now, what what are the velocities that you with uh, at which you can achieve this cruise flight? Or in other words, what should be the range of velocities that are possible to have a cruise flight, right. So, you have t is equals to d from C 1 and from C 2 you have L is equals to double. See what is t is equals to d? So, in this case how does the aircraft look like? Say this is your FRL fuselage reference line and this is your V infinity. That means, the aircraft is moving in this direction and this is your alpha and weight is acting perpendicular to the free stream, uh, sorry, to the local horizontal and lift is acting perpendicular to free stream and you have thrust along the free stream. Since there is epsilon is 0, you have thrust along free stream and drag acting along the free stream. So, this V infinity is parallel to local horizontal here. That means, gamma is 0, 
right. So, in this case, if you want to have a level flight, whatever the drag that is generated by the system should be overcome by the thrust. That means, drag is the requirement of the system to move at that particular velocity, right. For example, so T is a T is D, T is equals to D into half rho V square S into C D. Okay, drag is not the requirement. In fact, drag is the system's output, right? Is a response of I mean, it's the output from the system when moving at that particular velocity. Now, this is a this is a negative force, right? Now, the system has to generate thrust, which is equivalent to this drag in order to have this level flight. That means this is required by the system to perform this particular level flight at this velocity v infinity, right. So, what I can do is thrust required is equals to w by l by d, right. So, dividing equation 1 and 2 by performing a simple manipulation like T by W is equals to L by D. This implies thrust required by the system is equals to W by L by D. Uh, D by L, sorry. D by L, which is L by D. That is equals to W by C L by C. Here, which is W by C L by C. Now, what should be the minimum thrust that the aircraft has to produce so that you can still have a level flight, right? So, this minimum thrust required minimum is equals to the maximum L by D, right? So, if we have this L by D maximum, you can get the corresponding minimum thrust required for this particular UAV of weight W. So, what is C L by C D maximum? How can you get differentiate with respect to C L and equate it to 0? Why C L? Why not C D? It is a function of C L, right? C L is the variable here. So, where C D is equals to C D naught plus K into C L square, right? So, this implies C D square into C L okay, into C D naught plus K C L square minus C L into 2 K C L is equals to 0. How we got this? D U by D V is equals to u dash v minus u v dash divided by v square multiplying by c d square on either side of this equation. What you have is c k c l square is equals to c d naught. Yeah, this is 2 k c l square and this is k c l square you have to take it to the right hand side, we will get KCL square is equal to CD naught. This implies CL is equal to root over CD naught by K, where you know K is since and K is equal to 1 by pi E AR. You know how to calculate aspect, aspect ratio and you need to know what is the Oswald's efficiency of this UAV, right? then you will be able to find out what is the corresponding C L condition for L by D maximum, L by D max or C L by C D maximum condition. This is the C L condition. Now, what will be the C D for L by D max? C D is equals to C D naught plus K into C L square, C L for L by D max, max square, this is equal to C D naught plus what is C L for L by D max? It is C D naught by K. So, this say equation 1 for this case. 
from equation 1 or say C 3 crew is equation 3. So, this is C 3 k into C D naught by k which is equals to C D naught plus C D naught. Okay. So, this particular term is known as induced drag coefficient, induced drag coefficient, this is profile drag coefficient. Right. So, in this case during L by D max condition, your profile drag is equals to induced drag. Right. So, the total drag coefficient here is for L by D max which is equivalent to 2 C D naught. Right. Now, what is L by D max is equals to C L for L by D max and C D for L by D max. This equal this equals to square root over C D naught by k divided by C D naught to C D naught. This is equals to 1 by root over 4 k C D naught. You see here it is L by D max is 1 by root over 4 k C D naught. Now, how do you get minimum thrust requirement of this system? We need to substitute this L by D max, C L by C D max condition here. So, this equals to W into square root over 4 k C D naught. So, thrust required minimum is obtained by L by D maximum. which is W into root over 4 k C D naught. So, you, you can calculate what is the minimum thrust requirement to achieve this level flight. If you know the information about the weight of this UAV and the drag induced drag correction factor and C D naught profile drag coefficient right. If you know this information you will be able to figure out what is the minimum thrust required. Now, say if you want to fly at this minimum thrust required, how do you do it? Or say will the pilot understand fly at this W into root over 4 k C D naught? No, we need to translate to the to his language, right? So, what he can understand is what should be the velocity of flight. Right? Now we will figure out what should be the corresponding velocity of flight to achieve this level flight with minimum thrust requirement. So, we have C 2 from C 2 we have L is equals to W right. So, this equals to V infinity which is half rho V infinity square is equals to W. S C L is a, sorry half rho V infinity square S C L is equals to W and V infinity is equals to root over twice the wing loading divided by rho into C L. Now, velocity for thrust required minimum V for T R minimum is equals to root over twice the wing loading and the over density of the air at that particular altitude right into C L for T R minimum. What is the value of C L for the corresponding thrust required minimum? This equals to square root over 2 times W by S divided by rho into what is C L for T R minimum? C L condition for L by D maximum. 
So when is this thrust required is minimum? When you have L by D maximum. How do you achieve this L by D maximum? When CL is the corresponding CL and CD for L by D max. So the corresponding CL for L by D max is root over CD naught by K. Right. So this implies velocity for thrust required minimum is equals to root over 2W by S divided by density into root over CD naught by K that is K by CD naught raised to the power of 1 by 4. This is the corresponding velocity at which you need to fly if you want to maintain minimum thrust requirement right? and you still have a level flight. Say if you do not want to fly at this minimum velocity right, or minimum thrust required velocity, since your mission may demand you to fly at a different velocity, right? So what should be the solution? What, should, what will be the corresponding thrust required there? Right? We will discuss that right now. Now let us have a closer look at this equation C1. Thrust required is equal to drag which is half rho v square S C D. And from C2 we have L is equals to W which implies half rho v square yes, C L is equals to W where C L is equals to 2 W by S by rho into V infinity square. Now thrust required is equals to half rho v infinity square s into C D naught. We express C D as the in, in the form of drag polar C D naught plus K C L square. So you can get C L from here, substitute this C L in this equation. So thrust required is equals to half rho v infinity square s c d naught plus half rho v infinity square s k into c l square which is 4 w by s square divided by rho square or rho infinity square v infinity power 4 right. This equals to PR equals to half rho v infinity square S into C D naught plus two two K W square two times K W square by S by rho. V infinity to the raised to the power of 4 into half rho s cd naught cd naught minus tr into v infinity square plus 2 k w square divided by rho s is equal to 0. So, what are the roots of this equation? So, v infinity square is equal to minus b plus r minus root over b square minus 4 ac 4 half rho s c d naught into 2 k w square divided by rho s divided by 2 a rho s c d naught
process cancel to draw or cancel to So am I correct? TR by W is a thrust loading into wing loading plus or minus wing loading the square root over TR by W whole square minus over K CD naught divided by rho n. Now let us look at how this thrust varies with velocity. Thrust and V infinity. This is a typical variation of thrust with velocity, thrust required with velocity. Right? So this is the point of minimum thrust requirement that is TR minimum in the corresponding velocity for TR minimum which, which is obtained by L by D max condition. So the CL for L by D max is root over CD naught by K. So you have to trim your aircraft to achieve that CL in order to fly at this particular V infinity. Right. So that you are flying at a minimum thrust requirement condition. Right. And the corresponding angle of attack for trim we can find out by using the linear expression of CL where CL is equal to CL naught plus CL alpha into alpha. Right. Now this is your minimum thrust required condition. Now see if you observe here for any for a given thrust requirement, you can fly at two different velocities, V1 and V2. Say if you want to fly at this particular thrust required condition, TR. So the options that you have is either you can fly at V1 and V2. So which velocity you need to choose? Okay. Let us divide this plot into two halves based upon the minimum thrust required condition. So by the way when this minimum thrust required occurs that means you have a unique solution here where if this discriminant is equals to 0 you will get this unique solution right you will get a single velocity. So what is the discriminant TR by W whole square minus 4K CD naught is equals to 0. This implies TR by W is equals to root over 4K CD naught. This equals to TR is equals to W into root over 4K CD naught. So is it not the minimum thrust required condition? This is a minimum thrust required TR minimum. Minimum thrust required condition, right? Where L by D max is. 1 by root over 4 k c d naught, what is thrust required is w by l by d, right. So this particular point cor corresponds to that particular, I mean this point corresponds to this thrust required minimum condition and the corresponding velocity you can attain. So by, if you equate it to 0, then you will have a unique solution, right, from which you can find out what is the corresponding velocity of flight. Now say, if I want to fly at this thrust required condition, right, if I fly then what is the velocity that I have to choose? V1, there are two solutions here, right? You have plus or minus here, you have two solutions. Now which velocity you need to choose to fly? Now, let us define
So what is equilibrium? The state of the system about which resultant forces and moments acting are zero. Right? That means there is no acceleration, either linear or angular. Right? Either the body is moving at a constant velocity. Now we can say cruise is a steady and level flight where there is a constant velocity, right? Which is equals to equilibrium. So if you are flying at different velocities, that means you are producing different thrust required from the engine. Ultimately, you have to give, supply that thrust required to the system, right? To the UAV. So that thrust required need to be generated from the engine, right? Now, when you are flying at different thrust required condition and different velocities, all these points are equilibrium points as far as level flight is concerned, right? So, at aircraft have a range of equilibrium conditions, right? Now, what is equilibrium here? Resultant forces and moments are zero, okay? Now, let us consider velocity V2, right? Now, due to some external, now during this condition, if you are flying at velocity V2 or during this discussion, let us assume the pilot from the ground station has set the throttle of this UAV to a particular setting, right? Has, uh, has trimmed the UAV to a particular throttle setting. Now, we are not controlling the UAV, right? Now, say there is a sudden gust which has increased the velocity. Now, say as the See, this is the direction of increased velocity. Now, say this increase in velocity will take you to this point. Let us say, let, let this be V2 prime. Let this be V2 prime. So, this is the point that has increased the velocity. So, the corresponding thrust required is TR prime or TR2 prime at this case. So this, that means the thrust required has decreased, but the throttle is, the, the engine is delivering higher thrust and you are not touching the throttle, right? Now the thrust required decreased and the drag is decreased eventually, that means the drag is reduced. So the vehicle accelerate. There is a excess force that accelerates the system. This is the difference. Of. So the vehicle try to further accelerate, that means the velocity further increases. And the corresponding, say this to be V2 double prime. And the corresponding thrust requirement decreases. V2 double prime, this is your TR2 double prime. This has decreased further. So your drag decreases, the drag of the system decreases and this further accelerate. So you are not coming back to your initial equilibrium, right? Now say, say we, we assume that there is an increase in velocity because of the disturbance. Now say there is a decrease in velocity because of the disturbance. So in, again we have come back to our original equilibrium. Say this is my V2 comma TR, TR. V2 comma TR is the corresponding coordinates of this, right? Of this point. Now say the velocity has reduced because of some external wind disturbances, right? Since we are not touching the throttle here again, so this reduced velocity will result in a increased thrust here. The corresponding thrust requirement of this point is TR, let this point be VA2, right? And the corresponding thrust requirement is TRA2, right? So this has I mean, at this particular velocity, the thrust requirement has increased, which means the drag of the system has increased, right? Now, this increase in drag will decelerate the system. That means the velocity further decreases. Say it will come VA2 prime. Say so this is your VA2 prime, VA2 prime and the corresponding thrust is TR A2 prime. So this is your TR A2 prime. 
So that means the thrust requirement has increased further, right? Which will decelerate the system further. That means the UAV is not coming back to its equilibrium by itself. Either the pilot has to give a constant increase and decrease in the throttle, even for a small disturbance. Now let us look at the other solution here. Let this be this this point be the other solution. Why? Because this, if you want to fly at this TR, either you can choose this velocity V, V2, or you can choose V1. Right? Thrust. Say this is the point of my interest thrust required at this particular location. So I can achieve this level flight either by flying V2 or V1. So from this equation, right? Either V2 or V1. Now we understood if I fly at V2, I need to give a co constant correction to this, right? It can't come back to its equilibrium by itself. Now say if I am flying at V1, say if again let us repeat the same story like you have a disturbance that has increased the velocity of the system. That means this is your increased velocity. So V1, V1 prime, right? So this V1 prime will also increases, increase the thrust required by the system, right? Let this be TR1 prime, right? So this has increased the thr since it, the, the thrust requirement increased the dra and moreover you are not touching the throttle of the system you are not giving the extra energy to sustain this velocity right so the vehicle decelerates that means the velocity decreases that means you start coming towards this point from this point to this point right and now say if your vehicle velocity is decreased because of external disturbance from v1 to v1 double prime okay now the corresponding thrust requirement is also reduced so from this plot you can see the corresponding thrust requirement also reduced so compared to tr tr tr1 double prime is lesser right so since you are not touching the throttle again this additional thrust that is available will accelerate the system to the to the trim velocity or the equilibrium earlier equilibrium velocity that means without any external control if there are any if there is any disturbance if you are flying at this point the aircraft will automatically come back towards it equilibrium that's why to the right of this to the right side of this line it is known as stable region of flight that is velocity for stable region of flight this is the unstable region of flight right so stability is the inherent property to come back towards its equilibrium once disturbed from it right it should come automatically now why it is coming why this curve looks like this We'll discuss in the coming lectures.